Welcome to the Dallas Tobago Tour News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barito. Let's take a look at the headlines. Lighting works completed at Mon Diablo and Dil Mohammed Recreation Grounds. Ministry of Planning on a drive to develop East Port of Spain communities. And Trinidad and Tobago and Ecuador agree on a number of issues. Thank you for joining us. Prime Minister the Honourable Kamala Pasad Bissasa switched on the lights to grounds in her Separia constituency as part of improvement works in the area. The commissioning of lights at Mon Diablo Recreation Ground and the Dil Mohammed Recreation Ground Penal is part of the TNTEC Illumination Programme. Providing spaces for communities to gather and recreate is the answer to the crime problem. This according to Prime Minister Kamala Pasad Bissessa, who made a statement during a ceremony held to mark the lighting of the Mon Diablo Recreational Grounds and Dil Mohammed Grounds in her Separia constituency. Within one hour, the PM commissioned the two grounds with newly installed lights in a penal district. Speaking to the residents, the PM urged citizens to steer away from crime and unite as a community in keeping healthy and fit in activities. I encourage you to do the best that you can with it. Get the young ones out in the field. And I see um, we have already partway constructed the pavilion that I had promised you. That too will get off the ground shortly. And together with the Ministry of Sports, um, we will work to put some sporting programs here for the youth in the area. You know, we face a very serious crime problem in the country. And if it is that we can uplift the recreation grounds in this manner, with the lighting, with the pavilions, um, I believe we can get the youths into something constructive, something enjoyable, something beneficial to them and to their families. So I promise to work with you, to continue to work with you in the community here for us to improve the quality of life. And in this way, to improve the quality of light of the youths in the, in the community here. Today, as we turn on these lights, I turn them on for you in the community. I turn them on for the young ones, not so young ones. Use them to the best, as Sushila said. Take care of them. Don't let people pelt stone and pelt slingshot or whatever they want to. You know, people wicked, you know. Some people are, some are. Take care of it. This is yours now. I didn't pay for it. You paid for it with your taxpayer dollars. You are paying for this with your hard work. So protect it and save it and use it to develop in your own community. Help us in the fight against crime. Help us to develop the minds of the young ones and help us to keep healthy. Prem Sham Suku, chairman of the Penal Deva Regional Corporation, says having a lit park gave meaning to community life as it provided a place for gathering. Why the emphasis on providing lights? Why the emphasis on providing a pavilion we want to ensure, we want to ensure that the youth do not go astray. Prime Minister Pasad Bissessa says the lighting was just one of the many ongoing improvement projects in the area. You gave me another job. First I was your MP and now you give me a job to be Prime Minister so that I have to share the one of me with so many others. I know you will understand. As we continue to work together, the Rock Road here has been paved. We are moving on to many other roads. Um, Rochelle Road has been paved, Clark Road has been paved. A lot of the side roads and traces on yours too will be done in due course. In the end, the Prime Minister took some time and joined in with children in the area to kick some ball and score a goal or two. Kimbrian Callowan, News 4. The Ministry of Planning and Sustainable Development, in collaboration with East Port of Spain Development Company, is on a drive to develop East Port of Spain communities in an attempt to deter young persons from a life of crime. Just because a few people are criminals, that does not mean everyone in the community are criminals. Those are the words coming from Minister of Planning and Sustainable Development, Dr. Botawari, during a commissioning ceremony at Red Hill Lavantil and another at Coconut Drive in Mova. The issue of the academy, we need to think through and we need to determine how that might be done or what is the best way to do it to reach the greatest number of people in these communities. But it is something that we can talk about. I don't want to make promises that I cannot keep. But I think that the new pavilion and the football ground, the rehabilitation of the football ground, it's something that we can do together and I will work with the East Port of Spain company to see whether that is possible. 
The minister said the ministry spent $5.4 million to build a 700-foot retaining wall and to repair drains and pavements in the area to make the area more citizen-friendly. The minister went on to say the majority of people in this community are good law-abiding citizens who just want to bring up their children in the best way possible. I want to thank you for the welcome that you've given me. I want to thank you for the tremendous work that you've done in the community to build the community and to build a club and to work with the young people here. These, these people are truly young people. They are, I don't know what, how old they are, they must, might be about 13 or 14 about 14 years old, 11 to 14. And this is the time that you really need to work with them to channel them constructively. And I hope these young people understand how important the life that God has given them is. Minister Tiwari said with the development of the community, it was the hope of the ministry that it would promote the area from being labeled as crime prone and instead into one that could possibly become a tourist destination in the future. I want to say to you, keep on with all the good things that you've been doing. Continue to build your community. I want to let you know that we will do what we have said that we will do. We have built this, we have renovated this pavilion. We will build a new pavilion. We will rehabilitate the field and you will have something of value that you can call your own and that you can really do something with. The minister encouraged those in attendance, especially the youths, to make full use of Coconut Drive Recreation Ground, where a newly refurbished pavilion was commissioned. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. When we come back, no ifs, no buts, anti-tobacco competition. Stay with us. Celebrating Trinidad and Tobago's 51st Independence Anniversary is a time for patriotism and also a good time to reflect on the commitment government has made in the 2012-2013 fiscal package to build a dynamic and diverse tourism sector. As we take a look back at Minister of Finance's Larry Hawaii's pronouncements on the tourism sector, it is important to note that with the assistance of the Tourism Ministry, the proposed plans and initiatives have been rolled out over the year, which has indeed aided in the development of the industry. The government is committed to building a dynamic and diverse tourism sector. There is no reason why Trinidad and Tobago cannot develop a diverse and competitive tourism industry. It has the most diverse flora and fauna in the region, from sea turtles to the pitch lake. It has some of the most unspoiled beaches, as well as the most sophisticated sporting and medical facilities in the region. Minister Larry Hawaii's opening remarks on the tourism sector in the 2012-2013 budget presentation. The minister said that Trinidad and Tobago also has the most dynamic business and creative arts environment and the fact that such a tourism sector had not been achieved at that time resulted from a lack of investment in time and energy. Minister Larry Hawaii said with the newly then appointed Minister of Tourism, Stephen Cady's, all that has changed. He has already commenced the development and implementation of a multifaceted program to achieve the goal of making Trinidad and Tobago the number one location in the region for tourist arrivals. As an initial step, we are committed, as is the, the Tobago House of Assembly, to ensuring that Tobago becomes, first and foremost, a tourism destination of choice for both domestic and international tourists. Accordingly, the Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration with the Tobago House of Assembly, is increasing its marketing and promotion programs. In the year 2012, the government established the Trinidad and Tobago Tourism Business Development Limited as a corporate body to administer the Tobago Tourism Development Fund. The minister said the fund would provide guarantees for two major business categories of the tourism sector in Tobago. The Export-Import Bank of Trinidad and Tobago has been assigned the responsibility for managing, through an agency agreement, the Trinidad and Tobago Tourism Business Development Limited, 
and the, and the associated Tobago Tourism Development Fund. The fund, he said, would have an initial capital of 100.0 million with further annual allocations of 50.0 million over the next two years. The Exim Bank of Trinidad and Tobago, in collaboration with the Bankers Association of Trinidad and Tobago, has so far developed procedures under which businesses in Tobago can access the guarantees. Also, the Minister of Tourism has so far taken steps to expand the quality of room stock both in Trinidad and in Tobago, utilizing public-private partnerships. Following the achievement of this plan was the development of the airport facilities in Tobago. A major expansion of the Tobago airport, which Minister Hawaii said, would be undertaken and utilized by the PPP model. All these initiatives were later addressed by Minister of Tourism Stephen Cadiz in his contribution to the debate of the budget presentation for the 2012-2013 fiscal package. Joseph Lopez, News 4. In other news, a number of young persons use their talents to promote a message which is often heard but rarely heeded. There is a high number of tobacco smokers in Trinidad and Tobago, and the Ministry of Health found a creative way to combat this prevalent issue. No if and no that for each cigarette you smoke is like pulling a hole tight on your belt. You tight, tight, tighten too much, one day you're gonna suffocate yourself. But don't take my word for it. For I am just a plant. I am just a part of the lung cancer looking to reach to your heart. I shan't, won't and can't be stopped once you see I start. I am not your mother or your father, your uncle or your aunt. I am a part. The Ministry of Health hosted its No Ifs, No Buts, Tobacco Free Poetry Slam at the National Library in Port of Spain. There was a large turnout of contestants and spectators at the event, which promotes a tobacco free lifestyle. The No Ifs, No Buts campaign started in July of this year. It was launched, and we had a youth forum where we got uh, some youth of Trinidad to come and tell us what they thought about this whole campaign, the whole idea, you know. I mean, Tobacco is and tobacco use in Trinidad is very popular. You'd be surprised that about at the age of seven, actually the age of 13, youth are starting to smoke, and that's a problem. Considered the brainchild of the event, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth Masir spoke of the rationale behind the poetry slam. Once you start smoking in your teenage years, it is the most difficult thing to quit. So the reason why the rationale or the justification behind this particular event is that we want to get young people not to start smoking. Because once you do that, then it is very difficult. We could have all the nicotine gum and patches and all the treatments that are available. It is not going to work as if we get people not to initiate smoking, not to start smoking. And this is why this event, the concept and so on, is a collective thing. But I am hoping that we would, this is something that I want to snowball. He urged the students to spread the message throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And one way he intends to do this is by publishing the poems and making them available to all secondary school students. The young contestants were praised for a job well done, and the judges expressed their pleasure in the creativity behind the various pieces. It was an anxious moment when the results were called out. In third place was Jantel Calice. In second was Jabari Lynch. And first place went to Brendan O'Brien. For those interested in future events, visit the group's Facebook page, No Ifs, No Buts. Nikolai Edwards. News 4. When we come back, our sport report. Stay with us. TT Pro League clubs are consistently taking top honors in the Caribbean but seem to struggle at the next level. Wayne Cunningham spoke to Caledonia AIA coach Jamal Shabazz about this worrying tread ahead of his team's CONCACAF Champions League match versus Guatemala Comunicaciones. Yes, TT Pro League clubs have easily advanced to the group stage of the CONCACAF Champions League from the Caribbean Football Union. But when they reach the big stage, 
they struggle. W Connection and Caledonia AIA both suffered opening round losses and are now in must-win positions to advance to the quarterfinal stage of the region's premier tournament. We ask Jamal Shabazz, what will aid in the turnaround? I think it's necessary that uh, clubs in the Pro League get exposed to, to more competition higher than the level of the Caribbean. Um, when, when we look back to the, to the late 70s, early 80s, when we had ASL Sports as the professional team, at the suite brought in a lot of teams from England, from, from Brazil, and there was this constant playing of matches against opponents that are higher than the Caribbean level. We only, in, 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 in the TT Pro League, uh, get to play matches against opponents higher than the Caribbean level in the CONCACAF Champions League. So there, there, there must be some, some tournament, pre-tournament, that we can get exposed to that le level a lot more. So because the margin for error at CONCACAF is, 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 is so small and, and we, we pay the price only on match days. Shabazz was philosophical about his team's upcoming match versus Guatemala's Comunicaciones, a match where they can't afford to drop any points. Well, it's almost like an egg and spoon race. You know, you've got to move quickly, but you've got to move carefully. And I think we've got to play compact, but we've got to use the fact that we're playing at home. We won't have any breathing problems as we had in Mexico. And we've got to drive that to gain more penetration in the attack. I think, you know, we're doing well in terms of keeping the ball and moving the ball from side to side. But to, we've got to try now to turn possession into penetration and chances at goals and eventually goals. The former national goalkeeper is concentrating fully on the coming fixture and refuse to entertain the thought of an early elimination from the Champions League. Well, we're just mainly looking at the game. We're not looking at the, the overall tournament as yet. You know, I think it's just important for us to just focus on the game and the performance and the effort that we put into it. And then after, after that, see, you know, what results come with our effort and our performance. After that, we would look at, at what confronts us at that time. Support is needed for what is seen as a unifying force in the community. I think having seen uh, W Connection play against Houston and, and hold their own, and hold their own very well because we thought W Connection should have won. So we gain, you know, that more belief that yes, we are entitled and can play at this level. We would like our fans in, in, in Mova and Lavanters to come out. Yes, we are aware of the borderline, we are aware of the gang wars and, and, and the differences in the community. But you know, we see ourselves as a unifying factor in the community because we have players from all the borderlines. We are men from Nelson Street, we are men from Beverly Hills, we are men from John John, we are men from the Beatum, we are men from in the Drive, from in from in Egypt, all over the community. And we are considered to be one clip. So we already break down the borderlines and we say into the national community to come out, not just in Mova and Lavantil, but you know, we represent Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean at this point in time. Caledonia AIA of Mova and Lavantil will face Comunicaciones of Guatemala in the CONCACAF Champions League on Thursday night at the Hazy Crawford Stadium from 8 p.m. Go out and support your team in this big competition. And Wayne Cunningham reporting from the Coconut Drive Recreation Ground for News for Sports. Thank you very much, Wayne. When we come back, more news. Stay with us. Trinidad and Tobago and Ecuador have agreed on a number of issues that affect both countries and have pledged their cooperation to the bringing about of solutions. This follows a recent meeting between the foreign affairs ministers of both countries. Fruitful talks have taken place between Trinidad and Tobago and Ecuador. On Tuesday, foreign affairs ministers of both countries met at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Port of Spain, where they were locked in talks for more than an hour, discussing a number of key issues. Minister Dukaran gave an overview of his meeting with Minister Ricardo Patino Aroca, stating that the topics covered included the ongoing power struggle between multinational corporations and small states, reform of the Organization of American States Human Rights Commission, 
treating with persons with disabilities, as well as other challenges that small states face. Today he brought to our attention certain matters of grave concern to him and his government and his president concerning multina multinational corporations. And we agreed that while we are certainly not in a position to comment on the legality of those particular conflicts, we would use our good offices in order to create an environment for a solution to the problems that Ecuador is facing. One such solution is the redefining of the role of multinationals. In Trinidad and Tobago, I have said on previous occasions, when I ever have the opportunity to speak to companies that are seen as foreign companies, or transnational companies, or multinational companies, is that the world has changed. And the world has changed in the sense that these companies must no longer view themselves in the context of being multinationals or transnationals. They must indeed see themselves as global companies with multiple residencies. And with that new thinking, there are rights and obligations that must be afforded to all countries in which they have residencies. And it is in that context we discuss the problems that the foreign minister so eloquently brought to our attention for support and for the use of our good offices, and we will certainly do so. Minister Dukaran stated that Ecuador has given its support to this country in its quest to give persons with disabilities the attention that is required. Our Minister Patino indicated to us that um, they are in fact taking initiatives to place before the United Nations uh, resolution in order to draw more resources, global resources, in a global level to handle the issue of disability in the world. And indicated to us that Ecuador has had an enviable record in this regard and offered the support at the technical level to support our agencies who are dealing with the issue of, of disabilities. So in terms of tangible results will be one, that there will be uh, an exchange of technical cooperation between Ecuador and ourselves uh, to our government on the issue of reinforcing the steps that we're taking on disabilities. And secondly, with respect to the global agenda, we will in fact pursue a global approach to dealing with this, which will draw more resources to, to be brought onto the issue. The Ecuadorian Foreign Affairs Minister said his country has had an extraordinary amount of experience in three areas of dealing with people with disabilities. These are examining, treating with, and preventing the issue. Both ministers are expected to continue discussions on the reform of the OAS Human Rights Commission and some of the issues facing small island states as both countries continue to deepen relations. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barreto. Thank you for joining us.